All right, so we are now looking at a portal on ServiceNow. And so we found it helpful for our clients uh, to have basically a one-stop shop for things related to IRM, whether that be their controls and assurance, as well as vendor risk management. And so the vendor risk journey really begins with getting those vendors inside of the platform. And there's a variety of ways that that can be done, but the three most primary are through a backend one-time data load. You could integrate with the procurement system, or you can enable a request item on the portal. And so we're going to be going through that example today. So in this instance, we're going to be requesting a new vendor engagement. So this is a new service that we're wanting to bring on board to the platform. Once we navigate to that form, we are able to enter in some details regarding that particular service or product that we're looking to onboard and start using. And so this would be the form that the, the business user is looking to submit when they're requesting an information security review. So they have a vendor that they want to start getting a product from or to engage, and they need to get that, that approval from information security. This is where they would go in to submit the request. And so for this instance, we're looking at a new HR management system, our vendors, Acme Inc. We can specify what type of vendor we're looking for, what's the engagement length, what's the start date, end date, some value parameters, who's the business contact, who's the engagement manager, and then just a general description. These forms are configurable. And so one aspect of it, and I think Linda was speaking to it a bit earlier, that, that Gunderson really wanted in theirs was integration with their project management. And so when someone at Gunderson is requesting a new vendor product or service, they're expected to pick a product or a project ID from that solution inside of ServiceNow. And so you can really start to integrate not only with other areas like project management, but even contract management inside of ServiceNow. So you can get that holistic view of the vendor procurement process and vendor onboarding. Once those vendors are in the platform, we'll come in and you'll have your inventory of vendors. So if we went to a list of all the companies, we can kind of see them right here. Each vendor record art itself will have a variety of characteristics. We can input information like its industry, what type of services it's providing, its website, as well as some address and contact information, including things like profile. So there's a variety of different characteristics that can be added here. One common one that we'll see added as well is something like business unit or organization unit, just to track which vendors are, or which, which organizations are leveraging which vendors inside of the environment. We can also assign those business owners and then a vendor manager. So this could be someone from the information security team who's responsible for making sure that this vendor is going through its process and getting its appropriate risk evaluations. Additionally, as we were requesting on the, the service portal there, a particular software engagement, a company, a vendor overall, can be broken down into a list of engagements. So if you have a larger vendor where you're doing multiple products and services are being procured for them and you're, you're leveraging multiple of their, their offerings, you can start to segregate those into their own vendor engagements because the, the solutions they're providing from a software perspective may be different if they're also doing some like cloud hosting for you as well. There's gonna be different security controls in place that you need to consider. And so you can isolate those as well and create your own vendor engagements. With that, from a, a macro level on the company record in this risk scoring tab, you can start to see uh, how the risk is being rolled up to that macro level vendor. So you can see that picture of, okay, what's my risk of doing business with this vendor overall, as well as on that engagement by engagement basis and seeing where they come into play and various factors. It's also important to note that you can set different statuses and tiers and things for your vendors. So sometimes it might be a tactical supplier, um, it could be a strategic partner. And based off of the type of vendor, you can establish different scoring parameters and rule sets. So you really have a, a robust scoring engine and, and risk analysis engine behind the product as well. So once the vendor is onboarded and once the engagement is present, the next phase in the process would be to launch those tiering assessments. And so at a high level, this tiering assessment is really just establishing the nature and relationship of what this vendor is going to be providing your organization. And so there's a draft phase where you're, you're determining which questionnaires you want to send out to the vendor, you're identifying who's gonna be receiving that, which business user. Then that business user themselves, they would receive an assessment to complete. And then you would go from there in terms of determining the tier rating. And so they would get an email with a link to an assessment. In this instance, um, I'm just navigating to the portal so they could also visit the portal as well. Usually GRC, my tiering assessments will take you straight to the screen. 
and they take the assessment, will be greeted with the assessment screen. And it's important to note too that this tiering assessment, the questions here can be configured. ServiceNow does come with a basic tiering questionnaire by default, but that can be further tailored uh, to meet your organization's needs. Or if you have your own inherent risk questionnaire that you're already leveraging, you could use that as well. But basically once they submit the questionnaire, they fill out the responses, they navigate through the sections. This tiering assessment will return uh, and a tiering score will be automatically calculated based off the responses. So inside the questionnaire templates, you can establish the scoring and things as well as your scales. So if the score comes back between a 40 and a 59, we'll get a moderate. And from that tier level, that really is going to drive the amount of assurance activities that are needed on the back end from the vendor. So if it's a, a low tier vendor, it's your cafeteria menu system or something like that, you may not need to go with a full blown SIG full assessment and a bunch of supplemental and document requests. It's a, it's a lower risk vendor versus if it's something where they're providing you know, a lot of sensitive information, they've got access to your systems or something like that, uh, you, that would typically result in a higher or more critical tier. And so you can set up assessment templates to be triggered automatically based off of your tiering results. And so once the tiering process is complete, our vendor or our engagement, depending on which level we chose to, to perform that assessment, will get a tier calculated. And then ServiceNow, if you set up tier-based submission rules, will automatically go ahead and launch an assessment to that vendor. And so we get something like this, where it's an auto-generated uh, security assessment or vendor risk assessment. There's a few different states here across the top. So this draft state, this is where we are uh, basically preparing the vendor risk assessment and we're establishing which questionnaires and document requests we want to send to them. So we have a, a SIG full questionnaire here and ServiceNow will, has the SIG integration. So it has the SIG Lite, SIG full and SIG core for I think a few different years, as well as you can add your own questionnaires that you may want to send. So supplemental questionnaires, as Linda was referencing earlier, we recently added a system architecture questionnaire that can be sent out to the vendors to really get a sense of the, the architecture requirements for bringing in that product. Additionally, you can do document requests, whether you want a SOC 1 or SOC 2 report, information security policy, maybe for a healthcare organization, you need a HIPAA certification. So you can, you can request those things as well. Once that assessment is submitted to the vendor, the vendor actually has their own portal where they can then log in and see a summary of all of their things. And so right here for this vendor act meeting, we've got three different engagements that are being performed. Uh, different people inside of that vendor organization, they can assign out who's responsible for certain engagements or for answering certain questionnaires. They can also have the ability to invite members to their team so they can manage their team and invite additional contacts as well. So if you only have the account executive as the point of contact, they can log into the portal and then bring in, in other folks from the organization who have the, the knowledge to respond to the security questionnaires. From an assessment screen, we're able to see the different re requests that have been submitted. So the document requests, as well as the questionnaires. Within the questionnaires themselves, you can see the different sections across the left, so they can navigate directly to those sections. And there's a variety of question options, you have attachments, choices. You can even establish question dependencies. So if you answer yes or no to this, to this question, dependent questions will pop up. So there's a, a full, full inventory of like 17 different question types, and you can establish those dependencies between the questions. Once those assessments and document requests are submitted, ServiceNow will automatically update the state of the vendor risk assessment to this response as received. And from here, we can see the questionnaires down below and we have the option to view responses. And so we can click this view responses button. And that'll launch up this interface right here where we're able to look at all of the different questions. We can start to flag certain items for follow-up uh, we can generate issues. And so from a question by question basis, based off of the response, we can say, okay, we wanna include this question when creating an issue. We can have internal notes for our, our own team. We can add comments to the vendor directly. We can flag it as something we want to follow, them to follow up with. And so we can navigate through all of these different sections, reviewing them in isolation. We can filter to those questions we flagged for, how, for follow up. We can uh, filter to only things that answered incorrectly. So they chose the wrong option. We can add notes and comments to the assessment. 
as well as just adding an overall macro level uh, reviewer comment to the questionnaire. We're able then to either export the responses to Excel. We can create an issue directly from the screen by checking that box. We want to include this question when creating an issue. And we can also return the questionnaire to the vendor for further response. And so the, those same actions can be performed with the questionnaires and the document requests, and it can occur on an individual by individual basis. So if you only need to send one back to them, you could only send one questionnaire back. If you wanted to send them all, you can do them all, but you would do it on a one by one basis as you're reviewing them. Other common enhancements that we'll see is adding uh, users identified as specific reviewers for certain questionnaires. So that's something that we've also added for Gunderson that can be added as well. Once the vendor risk issues are identified, you can have that back and forth through the portal. So I think uh, both um, Linda and Teresa were referencing that earlier where you have an issue identified with the vendor and need that interface for, for working with them regarding that issue. So you have your issue, you've documented the name, a description, you've established a schedule for how, how soon you want this remediated by, you've got your recommendations, do you want the vendor to remediate it, do you need additional information, you've got some explanation details. And you can also associate the question for which the issue was generated. Once this is submitted to the vendor, they're actually able to see it through the portal themselves. So if we go here to this risk assessment right here, we can see all of the issues associated with that risk assessment. And so as the vendor contact, we can log in here directly. We can attach evidence. We can see the description of the issue if it was populated. We can see specifically which question the issue is related to. There's different tasks and things. And we can chat back and forth to uh, to the information security team um, that is working the issue. So you can comment back and forth, and you can see it on, on both sides. So comment to information security, comment to vendor. You can also, from the vendor, or from the information security side, post what are called work notes. So similar to other modules and other tasks in ServiceNow, you can have internal notes that are not visible to that vendor. So they can only be visible to you. And then last but not least, ServiceNow does come with a dashboard out of the box that highlights um, a lot of the different uh, reports and things that you'll need both from the vendor and engagement level. Um, as, as with the rest of the platform, users will have the opportunity to create their own dashboards and their own reporting that's specific to them, um, as well as folks with the, the publishing roles can push out dashboards and reports you know, for, from a program perspective. <clears throat> 